Hi there, I'm Karen from the TIPS team, back with another after school tech tip. This one is part of our series on artificial intelligence, specifically privacy and data security with AI. Artificial intelligence is all the rage right now, but there are some cautions involved to consider as an educator. So this short video will provide an overview of AI tools and privacy and data security considerations for educators. Last week's after school tech tip was an introduction to AI. Will spoke about the difference between AI like speech to text software, how machine learning can create useful patterns like facial recognition software, and the higher level processing power of deep learning, which can make decisions based on data. AI needs data to learn from, and lots can happen with that data once it's been added to an AI system. Data privacy is a critical concern in the use of AI powered chatbots like ChatGPT in education and research. These systems have to access user data in order to personalize and enhance their services. But this collection and storage and use of the data is what we as educators need to be aware of. We can use the personal information of our students that's collected on the student registration form if it's used for educational purposes, as mandated by the Alberta School Act. In the context of education, personal data might include student grades, learning patterns, personal interests, or even photos or video. When an AI tool is granted access to this information, there's a risk of data misuse or a data breach. And that's data that belongs to our students, not to us as the adults. The use of data in AI systems can raise questions about consent. It's essential that students and educators understand what is even being collected how is it being used? How can we control the data? We can look through the privacy policies of AI tools or any third party application tool in order to see what we need to pay attention to to keep data safe. We need to look at the type of information the website collects. That includes what we can give voluntarily, like what we actually type in or what we purposefully give, versus what is tracked electronically like maybe our location or cookies. We have to figure out what information is optional versus what we have to provide in order to use the service. For example, if we log in with Google, we know that the login information we provided was our email address, the profile picture that's part of our Google account. We can find out what our information is shared with, including any affiliates or any other third parties. If an application has lots of third party affiliates, we can expect their privacy policy to be really long. A short privacy policy is not a very good thing. We need to know how our information is gonna be used. Is it gonna be used for advertising, for marketing? Is it gonna be sold to third parties? We don't really want that for ourselves as ad adults and definitely not for our students. We also should check to see how long the service is gonna keep our information, how long it will take for the information to be deleted. And if that deletion needs oversight, maybe we have to ask. Lastly, when was the privacy policy last updated? There are lots of changes in technology. And so recently updated privacy policies, we know that the company is taking care to take a look at that. This is the point in this video where I remind you that Google for Education's privacy policy is different from the free regular Google. You can search Google privacy and connect and read all about why we trust this platform with student data and how the data of those under 18 is treated very differently in Google Workspace for Education. So in addition to understanding privacy policies, because of course you always read them in great detail, right? It's critical for educators and learners to be aware of the various techniques used to track and collect data. These are things like cookies, which are small files stored on our devices that track online activities like preferences or interactions. This can enhance our experience and it can also be used for targeted advertising as well as data mining purposes. And we don't ever want to expose students to those applications of their data. So to protect your own data as an adult, you can regularly clear out cookies or you could use a private browsing mode like Chrome's incognito mode that restricts the collection of personal information. 
Learners should also be cautious about granting unnecessary permissions to apps, like perhaps it's asking for location data or wants to connect to all our contacts or something like that. Unless it's absolutely necessary for the intended function of the application, we don't want to grant that access. So by being vigilant about cookies, about tracking, about app permissions, we can take more proactive steps to safeguarding our data. When we're integrating AI into the classroom, it has to be done responsibly and with care for learner privacy. As educators, it's our responsibility to choose our classroom technologies with rigor. But we also want to empower our students to make informed decisions about technology and how they're using them. We know AI is in lots of different places right in our students' hands, in applications they use every day, like social media tools like Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. We want to support our students to be good digital citizens. We can teach them about the technologies they're using and how their data is used. You can learn more by searching using third-party apps in Connect for more information about EdTech tools. And while you're surfing the net, please go to tips.epsb.ca for some digital citizenship support and lots more information about AI. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check back for weekly videos. See you next time.